Let me pray for you, then we're going to do a message called Tag Team today from 2 Kings chapter 18, and let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and for your blessings and for your favor. You've been awfully good to us, Father. Today, as we gather as families together, put this message in such a way that we all can grasp it. For everyone here needs to get what you want us to get. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, I was praying about what to do with this message. We've had a lot going on. There's been uh, so many families in crisis that it's, it's just been uh, uh, unbelievable. And a lot of things happening around here. Uh, the Lord just uh, supernaturally. Super, I, you know what, maybe I just need to publicly testify. Uh, our school was facing a major challenge, a major, major challenge. And it came down to the wire. We didn't know if it was going to be met. And I was on my knees praying on Thursday morning. The Lord spoke a name. Boom, just like that into my heart. I reached out to that person. They began to cry and said, Pastor, you're not going to understand I, uh, why I'm crying, but let me tell you, I walked into my job this morning, gave them my notice of resignation because I, God told me he had an assignment for me. And I said, you can't be God. Amen. Amen. God's good. Just as clearly as the Lord spoke to me about that, he spoke to me about this message in the sense that it's twice in the last month Literally, when I come up out of the bed, and I don't come up that quickly, so imagine this. When, I come, my, when my foot has hit the floor twice now in the last month, just a message, boom, just like that, boom, right into my heart. And this was, there it was. And I said, well, that, that I understand. Thank you, Lord, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll do my best to bring it. And, and I've been trying to figure out exactly how the Lord wanted me to bring this to you. And, and I'm excited about bringing it to you. Uh, from Second Kings chapter 18, <clears throat> it says, Now it came to pass... Now, I'm reading this from the King James. Some of you didn't know that I knew that version, but I do. Here we go. Now, it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. Quite simply, he was 25 years old when he started, and he did it for 29 years. His mother's name was also Abai, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Can I get an amen? According to all that David his father did, he removed the high places, he broke the images, notice this, he removed the high places, he broke the images, he cut down the groves, and he broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it, notice this, he called it Nahashtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave unto the Lord, in other words, he, he, he stood strong with God, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever. Try saying that in front of everybody. Amen. Whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and he served him not. Wow, that's awesome. You're not shouting. I'll show you why it's awesome. You know, I came in this morning, and the worship team was getting ready, and I started making a noose out of this, and they were kind of looking at me, but uh, uh, there's a purpose for this, and I'm going to need some volunteers volunteers today let me see let me see I'm gonna, I'm gonna need several volunteers all right let me see you know what Dawson why don't you come up here right fast since Dawson's coming Jamie why don't you come on come on up yeah he volunteered you it stand right over here for me uh, Dawson that's awesome that's great let's see I need somebody just a little bit taller and a little bit bigger Ethan Brown, he raised his hand, but come on down here, Ethan, that's awesome, great, so Ethan, I want you to stand right about here, okay, so here's the deal, we're going to need to find you four more friends, let's see them in the balcony, all right, Yvonne, is that Austin or Holden, I can't see from here, which one, which one is it? I can't see it from here, Holden, come on down, Holden, all right, I need at least one girl. All the way back there, Sydney, come on up here. And now, let's see. Hey, you guys are twins, and I don't know which one you are. I can't see from here. Which one are you? Alex or Andrew? Who's got his hand up? Alex. Come on down, Alex. <laughs> I don't pretend. I've known them their whole lives. I, I mean... 
They probably get in trouble for lots of stuff the other one does. Okay, so you four come over here and stand over here. Awesome, awesome. Go a little bit further, a little bit further. All right, get in line there. And let's see, let's just make sure. That's perfect the way you fell. That's great. All right, your names today are different, okay? So today, your name is High Place, okay? And today, your name is Statue. And today, your name is Tree. And your name is Snake. Got that? All right, all right, here we go. So we got High Place, Statue, Tree, Snake. Try that with me again. High place, statue, tree, snake. Very good. All right, since you were first, you, Dawson, are king for the day. <laughs> All right, hey, you are king for the day. That's, this is kind of what Hezekiah experienced. All of a sudden, he becomes king. Now, do you all hear that? He's king for the day. No. What that means is between y'all. But anyway, so he's king for the day. And so that's pretty cool to be king, right? I'm the boss of my dad. You're the boss of your dad. Wow. Wow. Well, your dad has a different role this morning, but you'll see that in a minute. Okay. So here's your king rope. All right? All right. But here's the problem that Hezekiah, he's like, this is cool. I'm king. But he had a problem. When he started trying to be king... He realized there was a bigger king that he was attached to. And the bigger king, every time that he would pull this way a little bit, the bigger king would pull that way a little bit. You think you can take him, Dawson? Probably not. Okay. Well, that is perfect. Probably not. Okay. Well, here's the reason that I, this is important. Because you realize... You can't take him on your own. And this is what Hezekiah realized. He couldn't do it on his own. So he thought about this. How am I going to be really king and be really free? Now let me stop for just a moment. How do you understand that when you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, that you become, you become a joint heir with Christ? You are royalty on this earth. How many of you realize that? Amen. We are free. Do you get that? For every time you don't say amen, I'm going to have to preach 45 more minutes today. Come on now. <laughs> amen. No. amen. All right. So we realize in order to be free, we can't have a bigger king like this controlling every move we make. So the kings that were before him, they had gotten four friends. I want you to look at these four friends. And these four friends got to help them pull against that king and their friends were high places statue tree snake all right so now i'm gonna give you a choice today you can get all four of them to help you pull all right or you can get him to help you pull Okay, because if he helps you pull, you see there may be a little advantage. These are great guys. You guys are awesome. But today, you're not so awesome because you're a high place, you're a statue, you're a tree, and you're a snake. Sorry, you volunteered. <laughs> All right, so now think this through, but I need to tell you one other thing. There's something I'm not going to tell you until after you make your choice. So look at this side. This is what everybody else has chosen. And look over here. And this is your other option. Now weigh it out carefully. Would you rather have the four of them, or would you rather have him help you pull? You, sir, have made the right choice. Because... He represents God. So even though you're the king, <laughs> he's God. <laughs> okay? So, all right. So if you guys will back up right over there. 
I want you to know that if you had not chosen him, if you'd come get your part of the rope, that when you don't choose God and you choose the other four, God comes over here and pulls on his side. Are you ready for this, Ethan? <laughs> this is awesome. All right. You raced? All right. All right. One, two, three, go. <laughs> pull. Come on, pull. Ah, oh, he won. Come on, give him a hand. Give him all a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Give him all. Y'all did a great job, guys. Good job. Y'all can go down now. And the problem is this, and you should have gotten a card. The problem is this. Now, adults, I know this is simple, but if it's so simple, why don't we get it? Here's the problem. He realized that he had to do something. He realized that if he wanted to be free from the other king, he had to do some changes in his life. I want to make sure we're all on the same pages. He had to remove the high places. He had to smash some statues. He had to cut down the groves. And he had to, I love, the, love this, break the snake. Because if you remove the high places, smash the statues, cut down the trees, break the snakes, then you will be free. Now I want you to catch this. So, in order for us to be free, I want you, we can just stop now if everybody's got this. In order for us to be free, all we have to do is remove the high places, smash the statues, cut down the trees, and break the snakes of our life. Everybody good? You got that? Some of you still look a little bewildered. What does that mean to remove the high places, to smash the statues, to cut down the trees, and break the snakes? To be free. Very good. So how do we get there? Well, the very first thing that we need to deal with was we have to remove the high places. Now, what does that mean? Now, you have to understand that the high places were mountain tops that they had built these altars on. And when they built these altars on these mountain tops, and I know some of your adults are saying, why I don't get this? Or why are you preaching so like this, Pastor, today on this Sunday? It's because if you listen for as I talk to the kids, you're going to get some truth in your own life. Remove the high places. Let me tell you what the high places are. High places are places they would worship when God wouldn't do what they wanted him to do. You see, if God wasn't moving the way they wanted him to move, they'd go up on the high place and offer sacrifice there. They'd say, well, if God's not giving me what I want, then maybe I'll try this. And they'd go up there. And they try something different. He said, they would say, if you won't give it the way I want it, I'll get it this way. And in order to find freedom in your life, listen to me carefully, you're going to have to commit to serve God even when things aren't going your own way. If you want to be free, you're going to have to remove all the alternatives because we all do that. As long as things are going good, we're worshiping in church, we're shouting, we're there, and we're happy and everything's going good. But the moment our life gets a little messed up, we find these places we run to that make us feel a little bit better about ourselves. And we say, well, God, since you're not moving, I thought I'd come over here. Now, I'm preaching truth. And Hezekiah realized something. That doesn't work so he got rid of them the second thing that he had to do was he had to smash the statue he had to break it all to pieces he had to smash smash that thing and when you smash the statues of your life you understand what that statue is about and i started to bring all these little statues up here today and take a hammer to them and then i realized the kids might take it home and then everybody be mad at me when mom's figurines are gone not a good idea. But the statues represent, listen to me, represent idols. Those idols that had to be broken. And what is an idol? An idol is anything in our life that is before God. Anything that we do, any action, any, any activity that we're involved in, anything that we choose over God. Let me read this to you. Idols are those areas that we consider more important than God. 
So we go, Pastor, that's so simple. Well, then why do we have things in our life that God says must go, but yet we say no? God says, that can't live where I am. God says, this has no place in the life of a Christian. And we say, but God, I still want it. And what that really happens is, we're building this idol. And as simple as this is, if Christians would get this, they could be free. There are areas of your life that you've repented for uh, over and over and over again for, and God's saying to you, you can get past this by the blood of Jesus Christ if you will just make the decision, I would rather have God than any of that. And you break those idols. Let me make it a little more plain to you. God's very plain on this. If you ever have to say, hmm, God's way or this way, God's way or this way, God says you only have one choice, my way. Anything else is an idol. Anything else is not in accordance with the plan of God. And God says, you've got to break those idols out of your life. I'm preaching truth now. You've got to break them out of your life. And the way that we understand if they're idols is if we have to choose between God and money, God and some activity, somehow honoring God in a relationship, if we have to choose in those areas and we choose the wrong one, it's now an idol. And it's time for you to make a decision. Most of us, this is what we do, we go, God says, I can't have you anymore. And we take it and we, we wrap it up and we store it somewhere and we go, just in case. Well, we're trying to make the idol a high place. Because that would be what we go back to when God doesn't make us feel complete. Let me tell you something. When you're walking in the ways of God, you will always feel complete. Because in Him there is satisfaction and there is fullness of joy. You don't have to want to go back. You don't have to want to go back. Look, guys. I know I'm talking simple, but get this. If there are things you're doing in your heart that make you know they're wrong, but yet you keep doing them even though you know God wants you to change, those things have become idols, and God says there's one option for that. Break it. Destroy it. In other words, stop making that wrong choice. Amen. Come on, if you're going to praise Him, give the Lord a praise today. Amen. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. We're, we're going to be done early today. The second thing you've got to do is cut down the trees. Now look, don't go cut down your mom's favorite tree. But you've got to cut some trees. Because the Bible says he cut down a whole bunch of trees. And they were called groves. And I want you to understand, there, was, there in this grove, there was a certain goddess that they worshipped. And what they would do is they would put up these poles and, and, uh, of images of her, and, and she was very, very beautiful to look at, and she was very sensual. They would put up these poles, and then they would build these gardens around it and surround them in these, in these groves. And when you went into these groves, you were supposed to be pretty quiet. And you were supposed to keep everything kind of calm. But as long as you were there, listen to me carefully, you could do whatever you wanted, no matter what God said. As long as you were there, there was one rule. Are you ready for this? Whatever feels right. And Hezekiah said, enough. He said, if you have to go do something in behind the shadow of a tree, hiding in the darkness of, uh, of a garden so that nobody can see who you are and can see what you're doing, he said, there's something wrong in this picture. And he said, we're not going to put up with this anymore in our lives. He said, could you imagine this if this was today? You'd hear, you'd hear all the chainsaws come on, right? And he would go, he was cutting those trees down. They're falling. They're falling. And how many people were still in there when he started cutting them down? And everything was exposed to the light. And our world tells us today, hey, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what anybody else wants you to do. Do what makes you feel right. And they'll try to tell you that with, with all kinds of substances and abuses and, and all kinds of things you can do with your body. And the world says, just make yourself feel better. But what the world doesn't understand is every time you try to make yourself feel better and hurt yourself, it actually creates an appetite for the pain. And it'll make you do things you have no business doing. And Hezekiah had to make a decision. He said, if I can't do it out in front of everybody, then I don't need to be doing it at all. And he cut down those groves, and he said, I want God on my side. Real simple. 
When the world says do whatever feels right, it's totally contrary to Scripture because Jesus said you are not something hidden under a bushel. You are a city set on a hill. You are the light of the world. The next one, listen to me careful, the last one, you got to break the snake. That just sounds like a wrestling move. You got to break. I mean, can we try that, you know? Nobody wants to wrestle. Anyways, break the snake. Now, you got to understand what the snake was. It was made out of bronze, and it was really made for good things. It wasn't made as an idol. It wasn't made for wrong reasons. You see, what happened was the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, and when they were coming out of Egypt, they started sinning. And when they started sinning, God said, enough. So he sent these snakes, and the snakes started biting them. And when the snakes started biting them, then they started dying. You'd wake up in the morning, put your hand down to get up, and bam, you're dead. It's a rough way to go. One right after another, people are dying all over the place. They're crying out to God, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. Moses says, God, forgive us. And God says, okay, Moses, this is what I want you to do. I want you to build this bronze snake. I want you to put it up on this stick. I want you to hold it high up in the air. And everybody who gets bit, they need to run out and they need to look at, the, uh, look at that snake. And they'll be well. Pretty good idea, right? Instant medicine. Whew, man, that was close. Jesus actually said it this way. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up upon, uh, so that all, uh, uh, for all to see. In other words, when Jesus said that, that he was going to be hung on a cross, he said all that would look to him would be healed. And that's wonderful. But there was a problem. You ready for this? When everybody was well and the snakes were gone... Somebody said, you know, we might better hold on to that in case the snakes come back. So they kept it. And then somebody said, why are we holding on to that? I said, well, I don't really know, but it's something about if you look at it, you get healed. Oh. So people started coming and praying that it would heal them. And before long, people started worshiping this bronze Watch what Hezekiah says. He says, you know what? We've got to be wholly committed to God. Remove the high places. We've got to make our lives in such a way that we serve God above anything else. And he said, it's got to be able to be done out in the open. You can't hide your faith, nor should you hide your sin. And then he said this. He walks right into the middle of their worship. Now, I've been to countries to where they have these big, beautiful statues. There'll be food all over the statues, and then there'll be babies and children starving to death all around them. Absolutely ridiculous. Praying that rock will change their world. All it is is a rock. These people were trying their best to get healed from something that had nothing to do with where they were, and all of a sudden, Hezekiah walks in, and I love what he does. It's just the smartest thing in the world. He goes, um, metal what are you doing why are you praying to something that God gave instead of trusting God today and he takes it and he breaks it to pieces and when he breaks it to pieces he says guys look we're not going to focus on the fact of what we did yesterday we're going to serve God and churches all across America today, children's churches all across America, people will talk about, well, yeah, I, I got saved back here and I did this back there. Let me tell you something. You should never forget the saving grace of Jesus Christ that changed your life. But when it becomes a thing of your past instead of your present, you're in trouble. People begin to worship all the old things about church and talk about what they used to do for God and how they used to serve God and how we used to fill things this way in God's house. And I'm not looking for people that are so busy talking about what used to be. I'm looking for people who want to stand up today and say, you know what, God, I'm not going to focus on what was. I'm going to serve you today with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my might. And instead of worrying about what's coming and what was, I'm going to be free today to lift up Jesus because this is the day of salvation. Yeah. Amen. So the question is, do you want God pulling for you? 
But all around us, even this morning, some of us, we got four friends with us. We've got situations in our lives that we fall back on when God's not making us happy. I, that probably should have been an oh me moment, right? Oh me. When we were, I was a boy coming up when you, people at least said, help him Jesus. That meant hurry up and finish, son. Hurry up and finish. Amen. <laughs> Don't you say help him Jesus right now. But you know what? Some of us have those areas in our life, and they've been trying to help us pull, and we can't figure out why we're not free. Some of us have areas of our life, their activities, events, things we enjoy doing, money, obligations, things we put before God, and we'll choose them every time over God. We'll choose them every time over honoring God's house. We'll choose them every time over honoring the things of God, and that's a problem, guys, because that keeps that pulling with us. And keeps God pulling on the other side. You see, when we're living in sin, God will allow those things to pull us toward his grace. Because he'll shake up our world. Some of us today, you've been doing stuff that if your parents knew what you were doing, your parents knew the way you were talking, if your parents knew the way you were acting, they'd probably be pretty upset. And today, it's time to bring it into the light. Today, it's time to be honest about it. Today it's time to say, God, forgive me for what I've done. Some of us, we talk about church and what God did in us like it's something that's done. And God says, I'm working in you. This is not done. It's not over. Your salvation is settled, but I am going to make you into what I have called you to be. Transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Instead, we're so focused on what used to be. And we're wondering why God's not pulling for us toward our freedom. And the problem is, we've got the wrong things pulling for us. And Jesus is wanting to change our world. And let me give you this, and we'll close today. The Bible says that once Hezekiah made the right choice and got rid of those four friends, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I just felt this quickly in my spirit. Some of you wonder why you can't get free. It's because you're hanging out with the wrong people. I did, I mean, it's amazing when God shows up the kids' message with something almost prophetic for somebody in here. You know you shouldn't have been there. You shouldn't have been there this week with them. When I get prophetic like that, I preach to these black squares. I don't want anybody to think I'm looking at them. Amen. You know what? This is what the Bible says in verse number 7. It says that after he did these things, that God pulled for him. The Lord was with him. Wow. That God was with him. After he made the decision, I'm getting rid of everything that causes me to be wholly committed to, uh, 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 not to be wholly committed to God. I'm getting rid of everything in my life that I put in front of God. I'm getting rid of everything I'm doing in secret that God knows I shouldn't be doing. And I'm going to make the decision, I'm going to serve him today. Some of you are going, why did I come to church this weekend? It's a kid message. You have no excuse for not living this then. It's true. And the enemy's pulling at us. And we've been falling far too many times because we've had the wrong support. But watch what happens when God starts pulling for him. God prospered him everywhere he went. God prospered him everywhere. God blessed him in every way. Wow. And then the scripture says, and he rebelled against the bigger king, and he was free. I don't know how to be more simple to you today. Freedom is yours. But first, you're going to have to remove the high places. You're going to have to say, God, no matter what, I'm not going back. No matter what, I'm not giving up. No matter what, I'm going to serve you, God. You're going to have to say, God, forgive me for everything I put before you and break that idol out of your life. You're going to have to say, God, you see what I thought nobody knew about me, the sin, the 
what the feelings of my heart, the bitterness, the, the problems, the, the, the sins I've been doing under the cover of darkness. Lord, I'm going to expose those to the light of Jesus today. Then, you're going to have to say, Lord, I thank you for what you did in me. But now, would you work in me afresh and anew today? I want to serve you today, God. I want to serve you today. And when those four things are gone out of your life, you watch and see if God doesn't start pulling for your blessing and for your freedom. Simple message. Stand with me all over this place. Designed for our children to get today, but I think God's been speaking to our adults just as much. It's time for you to be free. It's time for you to be free. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let me talk to the kids this morning. There's some kids here today. And your pastor loves you. That's why we took this service time. And you know you want to serve God with all your heart, but sometimes you just have such a struggle. And you today want to say, Pastor, I want to serve God with all my heart. Talking to the kids. If that's you. Can I see your hand if that's you today? I want to pray for you. Yeah, hands all over this place. All right, kids, listen to me. Some of you know you've been making some wrong choices and you've been putting those choices in front of God and you want to confess those now between you, me, and God right this moment. If that's you, just put your hand up in the air, hold it up high. If that's you, yeah. Some kids all over this place. Wow. Some of you say, Pastor Don, I've just got some sin I've already done in my life and, and I need to repent. Just put your hand up if that's you. Yeah. And some of you today... Pastor Don, I want to serve God the way he called me to. That should be all of you. Actually, I'm not even going to give you a chance to raise your hand on that one, kids, because that should be every single one of you. Adults, let me ask you. How many of you have some things you've been falling back on just in case things aren't going right? You want to get rid of them today. Anybody? Let me see your hand. Wow. How many of you say, Pastor Don, there's some things I put in front of God I need to break. I need to get them out of my life. How many of you would say today, Pastor, there's been some hidden things that I'm repenting of right now, and I'm going to expose the light of Jesus on them. That's you. Can I see, see your hand? Now let me ask everybody, kids and adults alike, how many of you will commit with me today that it's not just what God did in us yesterday, but we're going to serve him with everything we have today? How many of you all across this room? That's almost every hand in this place. I want you to join hands with somebody near you today. God's going to speak to people. God's going to speak to people. It's going to be pretty radical. This is going to be one of the most radical calls I've given in quite a while for salvation or rededication. But you're holding somebody's hand right now. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Don, I want to be free, but I'm, I, maybe you've never really given your life to Jesus Christ. Or maybe you've not served him in a long time. And today, you want to commit your life completely to Jesus Christ. I know you're holding somebody's hand, but I want you to lift that hand still locked together. Thank you. Some adults, some young people. Are there others? Today, today I'm a holy commit. Hold it up high. Hold it up high. Hold it up high. Holy commit to Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. God's changing lives in this place today. In Jesus' name. All right, put that down. If that person holding, holding your hand... Raise their hand. I want you just to pray for them all along with me as we pray. We're going to pray a prayer of faith together. And some are giving their lives and some are rededicating their lives to Jesus Christ today. Let's pray this prayer together. Jesus, right now, by faith, I put my trust in you. In Jesus' name, I repent of my sins. Father, forgive me. And in Jesus' name, I am forgiven. In Jesus' name, from this moment on, all that I am belongs to you. In Jesus' name, my past, my present, and my future belong to God. In Jesus' name, God is my Father, heaven is my home, and this matter is settled. Father God, I pray for all of those that have prayed that just for the first time today. 
I pray you're going to speak to them, Father. And they're going to have radical hope birth in them as they have trusted in Christ and are now a new creature in Christ. And for those that have this simple, simple children's message they have spoken to, Father, today I pray that you're just going to radically change them as they've made a rededication to you. And for every hand that went up during each of those areas, and even the areas of my own life, God, help us stop pulling with the wrong friends and make room for you to pull us to blessing and to victory and freedom. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering today. God is so good to us.